Spring is coming and with it a migration surge. The Maltese presidency has asked the European Commission to look at new ways to send migrants back. The migration crisis hasn't gone away. Joining me in the studio today to discuss migration are Vernon McGowan from Amnesty International, uh, Sophie McGuinness from UNHCR, Frank McNamara uh, from the European Policy Centre and joining us by Skype from Malta, Maltese MEP Miriam Daly. Let's start with you, Averna. This crisis is going to keep running and running and running. At which point does the European Union get a grip of the crisis? Well, first of all, Brian, as an international organisation, Amnesty International always corrects the point about crisis. Whilst we're definitely facing a global refugee crisis, the figures coming into Europe does not constitute a crisis in terms of numbers, but yes, indeed, a crisis in terms of the proper political will to deal responsibly with these issues. So that's really the first point that we need to make. Then, secondly, if you look at it from that perspective, you need see that we need real leadership. Many European leaders have come out and they've been very critical of the Trump administration. Of course, Vice President Trump is here in Brussels today. But let's question ourselves. Fundamentally, the European Union policies are about stopping people coming, pushing people back. The overriding sentiment is the same and people in Europe need to hold their politicians to account to have a more responsible solution. Yeah, Sophie, so if we have three major elections this year in France and Germany and also in the Netherlands. How do politicians respond sensitively to the migration crisis when their electorates aren't going to tolerate many more migrants coming into the European Union? Well, from a UNHCR perspective, we think what people want to hear is that refugee issues can be managed and we believe that they can be managed. Uh, I fully agree with Averna, we're dealing here not with a crisis of numbers, but a crisis of political responsibility. Uh, we would like to see European leaders and European institutions setting forward measures that can work and to reassure people that proper refugee protection enhances security, um, is good for EU member states when things are properly managed, and to reassure citizens that there is a comprehensive approach that is being taken. So we need to have measures within the European Union that have put in place a proper functioning asylum system, such as common registration. And we also need a holistic approach, which is going to provide support for people when they first flee from the conflicts that they're fleeing. Right, McNamara, the Maltese presidency, uh, Maltese prime minister, has suggested that it's time to build new humanitarian camps in North Africa to manage the crisis there and to meet the humanitarian and moral obligations that Europe has. Do you think that will work? Well, I think that uh, the EU-Turkey statement, which is the model for a lot of what the Maltese presidency is talking about with regard to Libya, uh, cannot really be taken as a solution to Libya. These are two very, very different situations. The EU-Turkey statement is very particular and cannot be transferred to the Libyan situation. We were talking to a potential member state, in, in, uh, some would say in Turkey, we were talking in terms of visa liberalisation and so on. Those situations are not non-existing. The situation on the ground in Libya is just not appropriate whatsoever for the same type of plan to be implemented in Libya. Uh, Miriam Daly, your country has been at the forefront of the migration uh, crisis and inflows uh, of uh, migrants. You're on the Mediterranean. Do you see 180,000 people coming across the Mediterranean this year and the real political reality of three big elections? Is there a way forward? This is, Has your Prime Minister set out the, the clear, credible agenda for what lies ahead? Um, I was following the Prime Minister's speech when he was speaking in Strasbourg precisely on this point. And I think the main point that he was pushing through and the main point that I would like also to see being promoted and being pushed through is that we need to focus also on the Central Mediterranean route. And I'm saying this because I believe that the Central Mediterranean route has been ignored for far too long. And yes, I do agree that the European Union as a whole lacks the proper policies to address the immigration and the refugee situation that we're facing year after year. But what our people are seeing is this lack of will from politicians to actually have something which is does not look pretty on paper, does not look nice on paper alone, but which actually works um, in real fact. And we can, yes, criticize um, this deal with Libya, and we should also criticize and make pressure to make sure that human rights um, are protected and to make sure that all the issues which we are not happy with should be addressed. But we need to also focus our attention on the central Mediterranean. 
Jean-Claude Juncker has criticised member states for blaming Brussels for all that goes wrong, particularly to do with the migration crisis. Uh, your Prime Minister he has put forward a, a political solution to what he thinks is acceptable uh, to the people of Europe. Do you think this is a, a new phase uh, of dealing with reality rather than wish lists on paper? I think the time to deal with realities was years ago. But I'm always hopeful that it will actually happen. Um, and it's true, OK, blaming the EU. But fact is, for example, that the Dublin um, regulation, as is with the first century criterion, um, is not something that is working um, at all. The fact that we don't have proper responsibility sharing is something that is not working at all. So it is high time that we actually address the issue holistically and when i say the addressing the issue holistically no one is no one policy on its own will be a silver bullet i look at the issue from four different aspects and that would be addressing the root causes of migration which is something which can be long term at the same time making sure that we focus on the security aspect and attacking human traffickers and addressing human trafficking and the loss of life making sure that our internal um, policies are working properly and having a proper common European asylum system that actually works. Everyone in McGowan, the, addressing the root causes is something which often gets overlooked because it, it takes a generation to, to really achieve this. The European Union is putting a lot of money, a lot of resources and a lot of policy time into achieving this. Is it going the right direction? Are they really putting resources into this? That's what I would question, Brian. We've had a live stream horror show coming from Aleppo in Syria this year, and yet our European heads of state fail to come to conclusions about accountability for those war crimes. Those same people, Syrians, have been been made bargaining chips in the EU-Turkey deal. We've got over 15,000 men, women and children stranded on the Greek islands in appalling conditions. And when we look also again at this story about the central Mediterranean route, we're just talking about the route. We're talking the last stage of a desperate journey. The long-term solution is indeed a few years off. We need to look at accountability and other questions. What about safe and legal routes, a serious resettlement program that's happening? And one last point that just has to be said. Anybody who talks seriously about having human rights of people returned to Libya um, respected are just not being realistic. We are talking about detention centres where there is torture, rape and starvation. The European Union should have absolutely no part, let's be very clear, in facilitating the return of these vulnerable people to those horrific conditions. Sophie, what can the European Commission do, what can the European Council do to compel member states to honour their pledges, to rise to the challenge that they have said they would but just simply haven't done? I think a key thing that needs to be done is to ensure that a focus remains on sorting out the internal problems within the EU and also focusing on legal pathways for people who need resettlement or who have a family reunification right, for example, to come to the EU. It was noticeable that in the Malta Declaration of the 3rd of February, there's no mention of legal pathways and there's a focus on the external aspects of the problem. We do have to look at things holistically, but that can't be at the expense of sorting out internally things that aren't aren't working. We have a relocation mechanism within the EU that has not been functioning as well as it could. We have just over 11,000 people that have been relocated. There are people living in dire circumstances on the Greek islands. We also have people in unacceptable reception centres uh, on the mainland. Many of those people could be relocated to other member states. That mechanism has to work. There are also people in Greece who could be transferred to other member states using the Dublin regulation. So we have existing measures that could be used to help people in vulnerable situations these, and that has to happen. But these policies have been in place for a while. The Commission set them out, the member states dishonoured them and now we have to face a political reality against the backlash of populism as well. Frank, how do we move forward with that? How do you how do you convince people, leaders, how do you convince European leaders to take their policy ahead of where their own constituents are, ahead of the population? Well, we saw in Barcelona and just the past weekend gone that there was a massive march of people, of the general public, requesting the Spanish government and leaders across Europe to invest more in safe pathways to Europe and reset, take resettlement and relocation seriously. 
I think that um, resettlement and relocation uh, not being taken seriously, uh, leaders must understand, will lead to the opening of the kind of uh, numbers that we had again. Um, so investment in relocation is actually investment in um, solidarity across Europe, solidarity with their fellow EU leaders who, by geographical chance, they are not in the same position as. Miriam Daly, if we look closely at statistics and get beyond the headlines, we see that uh, Europeans are not opposed in principle to migration, but they, they're not comfortable with how migration is being managed. Do you think the Maltese presidency can get to grips with the management of migration and bring back this credibility that's been missing? I think the Maltese presidency can bring proposals to the table for the member states, other member states, um, to discuss and hopefully um, agree with. We mentioned relocation. I'm sorry, relocation is not working. I mean, 160,000 um, immigrants had to be relocated. The figures of the actual people who are relocated, I mean, it's a far cry from the amount that should have been relocated. And when we speak about relocation, we're speaking about this responsibility sharing where all member states um, can show this uh, solidarity with one another. But this is not happening um, at all. And I hope the Maltese presidency can, together with other member states, because no one member state alone can do this. I hope that the Maltese presidency will be able to push forward um, changes, even when it, come to, when it comes to relocation, which was something which was agreed and which everyone was hoping that it would have been um, implemented uh, quite um, by far by now. The Frontex has proven something of a success so far, Verna, and also the idea that there should be an asylum agency created to coordinate these activities. This is slow motion policy, but do you think that uh, this will give more credibility to the process when people can identify who's responsible for the tasks and what those tasks are? Well, I think, you know, Frontex obviously has been doing a very good job in some areas, but the fact that its role remains, let's face it, a border control agency rather than at the moment looking at how do we really um, facilitate proper asylum processes, which is, is outside of their role. There is a big question because the current system is clearly not working. There's talks at the moment, of course, of reforming the Dublin regulation. But what the Commission has put on the table is more of the same old. It still puts a disproportionate burden on those frontline member states. It still lacks the key element of solidarity and leadership that people are crying out for on these issues. So indeed, to concur with uh, colleagues across the table, that rather than looking to create more chaos abroad and undermine the European Union's credibility also as a global power, why doesn't the European Union really focus on having a proper welcoming asylum process that actually matches the criteria of having solidarity and for goodness sake respects people's most basic dignity? Miriam Daly, your member state is on the front line. What do your constituents tell you that they want to see done with the migration situation? Obviously, there are different, different views, um, and as you mentioned earlier, there is the um, rise in uh, far-right um, policies, which is not necessarily something which is gaining ground a lot in Malta, but as you can imagine, it is also an issue which comes to the fore quite regularly. We were mentioning earlier the lack of management of the whole issue by the European Union. Um, as a whole. And I do believe that our constituents, not only in Malta but elsewhere as well, um, are aware of this. And as time goes by, they get more aware of this. And that's when they start really um, getting concerned about the whole issue as a whole. I believe that different leaders in the different member states need to be responsible, understand that there is a refugee issue that's not only happening in the European Union, but is happening worldwide, that we have responsibilities um, to take on board and that we need to manage the issue in a complete manner. That's why in, initially I was mentioning um, security, because security is an issue for our constituents as well. But whilst looking into that, whilst looking into the area um, of addressing traffickers, we need to make sure that we have humanitarian corridors, that we have legal pathways, because these things need to go parallelly together. And that's when we can start addressing the whole migration 
issue. Let me ask uh, Sophie McGuinness. After World War II, there was a massive dislocation of people and the Marshall Plan was part of the big project to get everything re-established, to rebuild Europe again. And historically, big projects have always been financed on the open markets with bonds as well. Do you see a way forward for the European Union to relaunch something like a Marshall Plan to competently and completely solve the migration crisis and to have it paid for with private finance? At the moment, there is EU funding. It's called AMIF funding. Uh, it's available to EU member states. And there are many member states who don't spend a single penny on integration. Now, if a member state spends nothing on integration and the EU is giving them that money to spend, then it's not a problem of funding. It's not a problem of frameworks. It's a political decision to not spend that money on integration. So one of our core recommendations to Europe is to bring in a mandatory 30% spend on integration for all EU member states of their own EU funding. So rather than looking at grander plans and bigger schemes, let's use what's there at the moment to properly invest in integration and properly invest in systems. Frank, do you agree with this or would you think a big, uh, big buying is, is needed for this now? Well, the first thing I'd say about it, Brian, is I think the, the comparison to a large extent is unhelpful between the Marshall Plan and any such plan for Europe. I think the Marshall Plan, uh, if I remember my history, was all about reconstruction in Europe. This is not about reconstruction. This is building from a very low base in many countries that are being targeted by the EU in their external dimension. This is um, very difficult for many ways and has to be taken only as a very long-term solution to, to migration uh, flows to Europe if that is in fact the aim. Uh, a lot of African countries, for example, would not be receptive to uh, making agreeing to conditionality, European conditionality, that you get your development if we get your border control. I think a lot of African countries realise that Migration is in fact a pressure valve. Uh, migration acts as a, a massive economic stimulus as well in terms of uh, remittances. And also then uh, it, it, transit countries that goes uh, for as well as uh, countries of origin because transit countries smuggling has become an industry of in itself, a very important industry, a lot, a, the livelihood of a lot of people in these countries. Brendan McGowan, do you think the Trump presidency has changed this dynamic? Is there a greater urgency or is Europe pushing back a little bit and finding its feet and maybe reconsidering root values, core values again? Well, as Amnesty International Secretary General Salil Shetty said at the, on the, after the executive order by President Trump, the gloves are off. We know what we're up against. The international framework of human rights, the notion that we protect first and foremost people's dignity is being challenged in the United States and it's also being challenged in Europe. I think what's a bit worrying in Europe is the extent to which it's being challenged. The notion that our leaders are seriously considering sending people back to Libya knowing full well what will happen to them. But what the positive of that is, and, and to reflect of course on the events in Barcelona and actually another big event that Amnesty International is involved in supporting, a citizens initiative. This is ordinary people doing extraordinary things. On the 6th of March they're going to come with many cars to Brussels and the message is bring them here. They want European leaders to honour the already made promise to relocate people from appalling conditions in Greece and bring them to other member states. So if there's any positive that can be found, at least we know what we're up against and at least it's mobilising people to stand up for their rights and the rights of others. Miriam Daly, finally, do you think the Trump administration has shifted the agenda in Europe and do you see it in Malta? Do people perceive that there is something of a European value system which really has to be reconsidered now and has to be fought for? Whatever we said um, a few years ago about the need to have a proper migration in place, now more than ever before needs to be put into practice, but we need to make sure that we keep uh, in balance also all the realities that are going on. Um, we're speaking about relocation. This has nothing to do with the um, uh, situation in Libya or the, this uh, central Mediterranean route. We are speaking about migrants um, who have already been in Greece, 160,000, which have not been relocated so far. So this is over and above. This has was supposed to be done um, uh, during these, these months. And yet, um, it is something that our member states are not actually living up to, even though they committed to this. So I would say that more than ever before, we need to make sure that we have the proper policies in place to address the issue we have at hand. 
That's all we have time for today. Let me thank Miriam Daly in Malta, here in the studio, Vernon McGowan from Amnesty International, Frank McNamara from the European Policy Centre, and Sophie McGuinness from UNHCR. I'm Brian McGuire.